Stumpers, what's going on? We are back for a more upbeat episode of CFB Ballers than last week. We got Johnny Rosedale here. Uh, he's having a tough week. Uh, University of Toronto has been eliminated. Is that correct? <laughs> correct. They've been they, 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 they've been ousted, and now there's only four teams left in OUA. And uh, who's your pick between the four? The Griffins. The Griffins. The Griffins. Oh, you like the Griffins? I'll be taking Queens. Queens University. They're probably the favorite. Uh, yes, it's Queens and Guelph should be in the finals. That should be the OUA, the Ontario finals, also known as the Yates Cup. But yeah, uh, before you before you start. I just want to, I, I know this is because it was really annoying for the Big Ten to come on and be like, oh, by the way, Hutchison scored a touchdown. So this is how I know what you felt like doing. Just a sec. I want you to sanction the hit on Ralph Sifrella. What? Are you fucking kidding me? Violated my wife's honor. Ralph slept with Jimmy? <laughs> he made a very insensitive joke about her body to some friends of ours. What did he say? Have to repeat it. That word's not good enough. Not if you want them clipped over it. He said she was having a ninety-pound mole removed from her wrist. <laughs> the implication was that her wrist is so big she could have a mole that size removed from it. That's what you want to do to the Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> the Big Ten commissioner. That's what I would want. Since you are Johnny Sack, you're actually asking for a hit because that's how I would feel. I don't even want to hear that. I, I just don't want to hear that. Don't bother saying shit like that. I think I th- we will definitely touch on the, CF- the CFP uh, rankings, which we did not do the first week because there's a little bit of controversy with some people hate it, some people love it. I think the college football playoff committee has sort of come to grips with the fact Michigan was the better team and we're on the short end of some calls. Hence why they finished ahead of Michigan State. But yeah, I, I'm with you. Don't come out with that news. Like it's not helping the the grieving process as is. And it gives us no closure. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's annoying. It's annoying. That 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 you can't really when when they do that, and I'm sure like all all pro uh, leagues do that sometimes, and even in college, and it's just really annoying for it's just like, well, replay the game then, right? No, it's not gonna happen, then forget about it. Just keep it to yourself, right? Agree. Let's uh, let's hammer out during this episode of the sit down. Uh, yet yeah, this is being recorded on Wednesday, November tenth at six thirty. Uh, so any lines that seem stale, fuck you. They probably are stale. I think they're constantly moving. Uh, we're gonna start with the recap of probably my favorite game on Saturday was Wake at UNC. Uh, UNC won fifty eight fifty five. I feel like it was a tale of two games in our message thread. At first, it was like, Hal stinks. Hartman is the guy. Hartman is going to have a better career. And you know I waited in the wheat. And UNC pulled a nice little comeback, covered covered the spread in addition to coming back and winning. What were your thoughts on that game? Yeah, that was impressive. I, I watched the first half, and that's what made me go with uh, this guy. Like, And I actually know – I knew Hartman from – high school so i was aware and i and uh, i i, I like the guy's game and his attitude so um i'm actually wasn't shocked now that he you know he took over wake forest and still got a couple more years i'm sure they'll be hyped more about him next week next year um sam Howell to me reminds me of uh, baker mayfield and i mean um he, he still performed obviously to come back in the second half and and looking at his stats, a lot of it was on the ground. 21 carries, 104 yards, two TDs, which is impressive. Um, on the on the in the air, 16 for 26, two 16, one TD. Um, so yeah, no, it's a sh- classic shoot game. And I mean, Vegas had this right on. And and uh, when you took that, it I would also lean towards your pick when it was two and a half. Um, yeah, I, fuck the. I mean, the shootout it, at the over and under, I think was like in the 70s. So it just shows like how fucking crazy of a shootout this was right so 55 58 dave Dave, Dave cost has finally built the program up to a nice spot and i love the system that we force runs a lot of it is like it's rpo stuff where where hartman has the ball in the running back stomach and he's reading the linebackers and defensive Mm -hmm. ends and to see where the edge is being set 
Sam Hartman is a good quarterback. I, I'm I'm higher on Howell than you are in saying that. I still don't think he's going to be a great pro. I just think you're really out on him, and I'm not not ready to concede that yet. Uh, in, in saying that, this was the Ty Chandler outing. This was you know, 20 rushes, 20 some odd rushes for I think 200 yards. I had read. Uh, yeah, impressive win by UNC and Wake Forest was a top 10 team. So that was the first top 10 team to go down on Saturday. And luckily there was another one. Uh, very, very, I don't know the word I want to use, satisfying. Watching Michigan State get shit rocked in Purdue, 40 to 29. Uh, MSU was a short favorite. So I don't think anyone was super shocked that this was a tightish game. But Purdue, Purdue handled business, and I, uh, I I was just really satisfied. Did you get a chance to watch any of this game? No, I didn't watch the game, but also seeing uh, this one, I just saw highlights. And, and yeah, no, I, I, even the spread, right, the initial spread, everything pointed to Purdue's direction. And, I mean, yeah, it was a classic trap game, right, coming off a big W for uh, Michigan State. Um Hey, if you're if you're a college football playoff team, you take care of business, right? But you're just like Iowa, and you came up and and again disappointment. But good for Purdue, two big Ws to eliminate uh, um, you know, two Big Ten teams, making them get a, an L. Right? It was first Iowa, and this time, um, in the matter Michigan of like three or four weeks, it was nuts. Oh, oh nuts. yeah, absolutely. And I mean the the thing that I that I saw that uh, their 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 QB threw for almost like six hundred yards on. Michigan State, 536. I just remember initially seeing the stat line when I saw the scoreboard, and that, that's that's fucking pretty impressive. Six, close to six bills. I mean, Kenneth Walker got what he got still, but Purdue still fucking – it seemed like a comfortable uh, W. They, uh, they, they really couldn't run the ball, and I don't think they're, they're a run-heavy team to begin with. David Bell on Purdue – has five 100 or more yard receiving games this season. He's going to be a pro. Uh, it, it would really address the need for my football team to go out and draft them, especially, you know, being from Purdue or for, sorry, from Indianapolis, uh, playing in a school located in Indy. It'd be a nice story. Uh, he had 11 catches for 217. So he, he was a bulk of the receptions. Michigan State had no answer. Uh, they're, they were fake. We called it from the get-go. They were fucking really fake. And they got what they deserve, to be honest. They should be on a two-game losing streak. Uh, we're, we'll preview Purdue and Ohio State this week because I think this actually favors Ohio State in the sense they're, there's going to be no surprises here. There's going to be no shots. You know what I mean? The, yeah. I, I think the Boilermakers are now going by the spoiler makers. Like, they're, they're in that zone. So I think it favors OSU. Speaking of OSU, uh, the fuck guys won 26-17 in a very underwhelming win in Nebraska. But I will say, you and I have harped on this in past episodes. Nebraska is like the greatest three-win team of all time. Oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Big time. I mean, we, 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 we talk about it every time we see them. Um, and their spread. Vegas also sees that, right? Because that's mm -hmm. the telling tale. Every time you see Nebraska up, you're like, what? Why is this spread lower? And then you see the reason why they can hang with the big boys. Big. And they've actually hang with the big boys. I mean, it definitely, even that record doesn't look good. It does, it, that Scott Frost guy deserves to be there a little bit longer. Because yeah. Because based off of that. They gave him, I, think, I believe they gave him another year, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, they, they had chances in this game. They were down six. They had two possessions and they couldn't quite do it. They controlled the the running back from Ohio State is at Henderson that they, they control. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. They've been able to to control the line of scrimmage on defense all season. And yeah, one of the greatest three win teams. And I was really hoping to shock the world on Saturday, but unfortunately it's interesting because the offense on Ohio State now is what's struggling the last few weeks. And the defense, as opposed to the beginning of the year, it, it's almost like flip flop and the defense um, I guess since that guy's taken over the defensive coordinator, Matt uh, Barnes, Matt, I think something like that. Anyways, um, he's taken over the play calling. So they, they, they've adjusted certain things like that. And now their defense is actually much improved. If you look at the stats as opposed to early on. So that's great for Ohio state. And the thing working for them is that they have like four 
rank opponents coming up, which is great for your resume for college football playoff, right? Like they have, they have it in front of them that they'll fuck. You have four squads pretty much that are ranked. So they they can, they can't lose to a uh, a team located in Michigan. That's pretty much what they're like. They, they yeah. it, it cannot. It's not afforded at this point. I don't think, but we shall see. I was gonna say. I don't quite agree with you. I think their schedule has sort of shaked out where their offense is now playing steadier defenses, and that's why they're struggling, but the defenses are facing weaker offenses. Like Indiana is nothing to write home about. Maryland's nothing to write home about on offense. Nebraska, Penn State's a decent offense. They gave up 24. I think mm-hmm. I think you'll see the offensive explosion against Purdue, and you'll also see defensive, defensive pushback and that they're not going to be able to slow down Purdue the way uh i guess the the no they're, they're just not gonna slow down purdue i was thinking i'm like what reference point do i have to a purdue slowdown game i can't even think of one they opened it up against iowa they opened it up against like oh wisco wisco put them in a box that's the only team i could reference but yeah i think ohio state's sort of just based on schedule they're, they're a fucking solid complete football team we should never be surprised and as long as we do this pod i i'm just wishing and hoping they slip up and I don't see them slipping up, especially after slipping up to Oregon already this year, who has a lot of love by the CFP, but we'll, we'll touch on that in a bit. Uh, have we heard this headline before? Johnny, Texas blew a lead. Have we heard <laughs> that? <laughs> have, we heard, have we heard those words uttered on the spot? It wasn't a big of lead. Of course, man. That's, when I, that's why I took them last week. I took uh, Iowa State. Iowa State. I, as soon as I saw Texas, I'm like, yeah. Just take take Iowa State. This is they they like Texas is like one of the worst cover teams in the country, I think. So um just up seven just, three. Up, up seven three at half. Yeah, that's good. Good for them. Up seven <laughs> three. You know what happens after that. It's fucking oh. big twelve time. Come on. It's like it's like basketball. It's a 27 0 run. Yeah. 27 0. Exactly. Just, exactly. Uh, just, just shit rock. Really nice pick by you. I, I have to give you credit. I threw it on that pick six thing I do. I, I ended up circling Iowa State based on your pick. I, li- I liked it, and I'm like, I'm never going to publicly back Texas again, at least for 2021. I'm off that boat. Uh, really good game in Texas A&M and Auburn. Auburn visited there. Super tight. Uh, Texas A&M had no, no answer for, I think you would agree, our favorite SEC team, right? I think we both really like Auburn this year. Or yeah, they, they, yeah. Came, they seem to be taking care of business. Texas A&M started to pull away. Uh, third quarter merging into the fourth. Bo Nix looked like the Bo Nix we know. Uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I think there's a lot of fucking love on Texas A&M or for Texas A&M, and it's all cir- circled around that Bama game. And I get Bama's got a lot of love by the CFP. Texas A&M is not that good. And I, I was so tempted to fade them this upcoming week. I didn't. Am I crazy for saying that, or are you high on I mean, initially, there, again, there was a lot of hype around them, and they do have NFLers on their team. Um, I think also some of the L's were like showing how you know they weren't, they didn't seem like the strongest team, especially because they were ranked top five, um, and they lost to Mississippi State uh, and and Arkansas are the two L's. Um, but they do have the talent on the team if you if you do look at from recruiting. And from an NFL prospect, they do have talent on the team, right? I mean, um, even with the Auburn one, it was defense that, that won that game for them. I think it was a, a fumble. I saw the highlights, and it was a fumble recovery um, that went for the uh, went for a TD. That really changed the game for uh, Texas A&M. Otherwise, it was just a field goal game and a defensive struggle. Yeah, it was um, 9-3. You're I, right, it was 9-3. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I understand, though, your perspective because – um that that would make sense you beat alabama the kings of the hill for the last 10 15 years um then then you're gonna get so much more publicity and you know what i mean so that's one of the main reasons i think you're absolutely right it's the bama win if you beat bama in a season you're gonna get lots of love and i mean that's what's happening with texas and do i believe that they're the team yeah i think they're a top 10 team possibly um, and and possibly like a New Year's Eve um, bowl team, but there I guess would be in that second tier with like a Michigan, I think of, of squads in the nation. I think 
I think I want to I want to I'll put you on blast. I want to put your statement on blast from yesterday that you messaged me. So correct me if I'm wrong. You said Jimbo Fisher will break through or Jimbo Fisher in Texas A&M as long as he's there breaks through to CFP by 2026. That's what you said, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially just again, I, I look at sometimes recruits. They got the number one recruit at, uh, coming in, and they have. I, I'm just saying. I, I noticed the last more more guys going to Texas A&M, and that's because of Jimbo, right? So that's all. Fair. I I, I strongly disagree because I think the SEC, SEC even on down years has squads that push push with them, and I think they got to earn the love. Although they have CFP love at this point, maybe it's because they have two losses. They're still in double digit seating, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, number yeah. 11, yeah. I, I disagree that they break through to a CFP just because I think the Georgias and the Bamas and fucking rightfully so, even the Auburns when, when they got to go on the road and play in Auburn. Uh, but but it, it's it's not a bad take. I just, I disagree with it. We shall see if that if that plays out that way. Uh, speaking also, of- it's my, my, my take is also because you pay Texas A&M pay big bucks to take Jimbo from Florida State, right? So he is from a recruiting perspective so far winning, winning, you know, battles against other big programs. And now it's just a matter of, like I said, if these big recruits do pan out, that's where I'm like, okay, I see, I, I can see them, you know, breaking through, but time will tell, right? Uh, fair enough. The, I just, I, you had said it and I'm like, ah. I'm going to bring it up on the pod. I, I don't know if I necessarily agree, but it, it'll be good to sort of go back and forth as the years go. Uh, the the other matchup I wanted to talk about in the SEC before we talk about the game we watched probably closest, uh, LSU at Bama, surprisingly super competitive game, said anyone that did not listen to the stump last week, I feel like we both said this game had the eyes to be competitive. Am I right there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. When we saw that spread, I was like, this, this doesn't seem right. The spread is way too high for an LSU Alabama game. And I mean, it, 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 that, that rivalry and the amount of recruits that LSU even has, even on down years, it's just like, well, they can, they can go for it. Uh, you know, talent for talent, they have it right. Like, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, um, if you were to go coaching, you'd probably go save and give them a big advantage. But um, in terms of recruiting wise, LSU is top five every every year. They they you know they get it. They get a fucking lot of big time players together. It's just a matter of meshing it together. A few years ago, they meshed together and they were one of the best um, college football teams of all time. Um, but yeah, when we uh, they had their opportunities, right? The LSU to to get even closer and to possibly upset them. But even then, I mean, that spread was ridiculous. Yeah, no, I, looking at it, I didn't see it being that close. You and I disagreed on uh, LSU going for it on fourth and goal deep. You thought they should have settled for points. That very well yeah. could have been the game. That very well could have been the game. I just, I get the understanding with LSU being like, how many times are we going to get this deep? You know, you settle for three there, you get the uh, Twitter yeah. coaches snapping on it and i think part of part of why coaches do it is the analytics say it does it and part of the reason for that is you pin a team deep when you pin a team inside their 10 with the freshman quarterback i think you're especially because your defensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage so to speak you'd like the opportunity to get in buddy's face to force pressure maybe force a mistake and this is all based on you not getting all seven which they're initially trying to push I got your point, and Nick Saban does tend to make coaches pay for that. That is that is uh, not analytically proven, but it definitely is an eye test thing that we see happen. Um, LSU's been playing fine, and, and that's that's why we thought, like, this, it's a fucking big number. And, yeah, it turned out to be a really tight one. I, I don't know about you, but I was definitely cheering LSU. <laughs> I was definitely cheering LSU. Oh, yeah, yeah, all day. LSU, I, I wanted that they to pull it off, too. Unfortunately, yeah, but fuck. Uh, Bama's defense solid, man, and and I don't know if um, you watched that, that Will Anderson guy, but he might be that's like the best defensive player in the country. He does. Mm -hmm. I think he, he might get. I mean, I don't know if he will get a chance to go to um, New York to be one of the three, but he's up there um, with the with the Georgia players. I mean, looking at his stats yeah, week by week, I can see like even even um, against LSU, just like eight solo tackles. Team tackles 12, one and a half sacks, 
uh, QB uh, hurries to um, just all over the place. That guy, he'll be he obviously be NFL or just like many Bama guys, but he's had like a big time year if you look at his stats this year. Yeah, I, I, I'll go with the stock take that Thibodeau is. Uh, I have not had a, a good lock in on Will Anderson, so I will definitely take a peek. And those numbers do not lie. Yeah. And, and you know, it, it's a fact that we're fucking great players there anyway. So it, it should come as no surprise to anyone that listens that Bama has a, a top tier athlete. Uh, let's jump into the big one. I, I Indiana at Michigan. Michigan covers. I think your only one of the week last week. Cover or did you go two and one? I went. I went two and one. I had Iowa State. Right, right, right. Uh, sorry, it, th- this cover was nice though because it's close to the number, twenty nine seven, and I had three points to this game before it happened and things I needed to have. So obviously, first was win, check, win. We're good. Style points X, not a lot of style points. Survive, no injuries. Looked fine for a sec. Corum goes down with a foot injury. Could potentially play this week against Penn State. Not not a great Saturday in Ann Arbor. I was hoping the crowd would be, you know, jacked and treated to a, a fun show before this tough stretch of games, and unfortunately, did not happen. What did you think of this game? Did you get a chance to watch anything? Or was it highlights? Uh, just highlights. I, I expected Michigan to come out and win. I was watching LSU. Um, Bama, but I expected them to come out and, and win this game convincingly, and I think they did it right. Like I, when I saw that spread, and especially coming off of a bad L, the way they came out, I feel like if you're, you know, a top team, you come out and smack a team like Indiana, which is a bottom feeder in uh, in the Big Ten, which they did comfortably. So I mean. Uh, yeah, next week, that's all that matters, right? Next week's the big one, um, playing Penn State, and they did their job, right? It would have been a little bit more concerning if this game was closer than what the spread indicated. Yeah, I will I will say another thing with Michigan is their offense is not flow for said style points. I'm sort of stuck on that point. They're not mm-hmm. going to be a style point team that way. I was just sort of hoping they were, right? I, I was hoping that they were able to come out and throttle them. This game was a lot closer, as you said. It was a lot closer than I think most people would have assumed, right? Do you like that Harbaugh throws McCarthy in there for a few plays? No, he's been, no, no. Yeah, neither do I. Neither it doesn't, do I. It's, it, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it doesn't fulfill any type of appetite for what we're getting out of him. And what he did against Michigan State is my worst fucking fear is fumbling the ball, throwing a pick. Exactly. It, it does nothing for the kid's confidence. I And to be honest, I like him in there for maybe a play or two. They bring him in for like five to six to seven, and it stretches out. And I, fucking, I can't get behind it. And I don't know what the long-term build on this is. Does it actually help the kid? Does it not? I don't have a crystal ball. As my boss at work says, I hate the fact that I just said that on the pod. But I think – it's one of the most infuriating situations. And he's got great arm talent. I just don't know that he has the decision-making abilities. If we're a three-loss team at this point, fucking roll the dice. Throw him in the game. Let him start a game. We're, we're supposed to be pretending to be college football playoff ready. This is not what college football playoff ready teams tend to do. Am I wrong on that? No, I, I, I agree. I don't, I don't like it either, specifically because Cade McNamara – is a decent QB, probably the best QB Harbaugh's had since, or similar to Wilton Spite. Um, and when when it when it when you have that kind of player, I almost prefer him out there just to build, keep his confidence, not have to look over his back, um, knowing that this kid who is a lot of potential coming up, um, JJ McCarthy, is there getting little snaps, right? Because I mean. Yeah, having 10 attempts, throwing the ball, 10 attempts during an INT. Um, I, I just, there's no need for this guy at this moment. And I agree with you. If this mission, if this year was um, already three or four L's, then you're looking forward to next year, throw him, throw him in there. And yes, let's see what this guy can do. He's, he's hot, he's hot shit. But like you said, especially how the season is going, you want to keep the momentum going with the current QB. Like he, he hasn't turned the ball over McNamara 
Um, and sure, he's not like the sexiest QB where he's going to make all these amazing plays and so forth, but he's doing his job and he's the upperclassman and he deserves to just kind of stay in there. And I don't know if it was like last year, Joey Milton um, making mental mistakes and so forth. Yeah. Yes. Throw Matt McNamara in there because that's going to be a few. And guess what? That worked out. Right. And you, you would even throw McCaffrey in years ago, year, last year or the year before, because that's like your future and seeing what you got again, your season's over midway through the season from a uh, Michigan brand perspective of playing in the top, you know, uh, top bowls or a college football playoffs. They'll do that. But I agree with you where I, I don't think there's a there's any need for him. And I, again, against Penn State, like I, I know he's going to throw him in there against Ohio State. And I, uh, I'm concerned for what possibly could happen again. I, I will say I get the, the one thing I understand is you sort of you make the defense adjust and their personnel starts moving. In. You know, you always want to cause some form of confusion. But I feel like the tape's out when J.J. McCarthy comes in. There's, there's sets that they sort of, they went with him in, and a lot of them are sort of QB draws and stuff to that nature. I also don't think you do that with a team with this good of a run game. But I'm, I'm not a coach for I, I'm not a coach in any sense. I've never played high level football. Just as a fan watching, I don't like it. And it's a valid question. Uh, we could jump right into Michigan Penn State previews week eleven coming up. We got let's see one two three four, and we got. 11 games we're going to be breaking down. Uh, this one obviously got a lot of focus. Penn State is extremely healthy. Uh, the guys in the desert don't believe in Penn State. And the line has shifted to Michigan minus one and a half. I guess I, I'm going to I'm gonna take Michigan plus 0 0.5, which is pretty much a pick em, which is when I type this out. Uh, I like Michigan here. I really think this game is won in the first quarter. You cannot get fucking run off the field. Pretty much what you needed to do at home against Indiana, Penn State's going to try to do is start fast, get going early, can't make mistakes, even if, if it ends up in a few three and outs. Do not turn the ball over. Survive the first quarter. I think the Big Ten scheduling really saved us in not having this game played under the lights, but instead at noon on Fox and I unfortunately will not be able to watch this game, which fucking really, really hurts, but I'm ensuring I'm watching against the fuck guys. Um, I like Michigan minus one and a half here. I see a 24, 24, 14 win. Wow. Well, hopefully you're right. Cause I mean, this, I think this is the first time you're picking Michigan too. This is a big, this is a big I mean, one. For I, you. Think, I feel, I feel like I took them against Nebraska. I feel like okay. it's yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, no, this is definitely a big time game, right? So, I mean, um, fuck, I, I can't say I'm as confident as you are because our recent history at Penn State's always been uh, a tough one in recent years. So, and like you said, Michigan, uh, Penn State's healthy, which I don't like either. And Penn State to me is just a weird team. I, I don't really have a read on them from the few games I've watched them. One, one week they look fucking horrible. Um, I guess like an Illinois team at home the next week, they, they can hang with Ohio state. I have no idea what Penn state team's going to come out. Um, one thing's for sure though, they got, uh, Michigan's got a lockdown that Dotson guy, if I'm not mistaken, is a wide yeah. receiver on Penn state. He's, he's yeah. explosive. He'll be an NFLer. Um, so they definitely have to lock him down. And, and again, uh, Michigan's strength is the defense. And I like those, uh, our big time guys, Got a, they've got to step up on the fucking uh, Hutchinson again, um, and that o, is it Ojabo? He, he's a, he's going to be an NFLer, if I'm not mistaken. That, that that's another big time player that we have up front over there. So hopefully they I, win I, the trenches. Sorry. I they ha they have to win the trenches. There's no doubt about it. They have to win both yeah. sets of trenches on the road here. This this is by far their toughest road test of the year. This is more difficult than going to Michigan State. I don't give a shit. It's not. It's, oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. And I mean, and again, if if Illinois fucking ran the ball down their throats, Michigan's got the formula. If uh, hopefully Corum is um, healthy for the game, um, they 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 got the formula to run the ball. So I, I really have no read on this game based off of La Penn State. I have no idea who the hell's going to show up. And being that it's fucking pick them one and a half is also like that's what I expected with the Michigan State game. 
And yet we were like favorite four and a half or to start it from that, I believe. Yeah, it was four mm-hmm. and a half. Maybe we went down to three and a half. So I have no idea what's going to happen. But uh, this is probably the game that I watch on Saturday. Won't be especially at 12 o'clock. I'll be watching this. Message me. I will be uh, I will be at a lunch, but please message me. Keep me posted. I'll be watching the score like a junkie anyway. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think Penn State, a whiteout would have been really difficult. A whiteout would have been really tough on the system. I think the 12 p.m. favors us. So that's where I'm I'm sort of going. I, I always try to draw on positives. You and I are opposite machine fans. I'm the optimist, you're the pessimist. Uh, I get really angry and you're very like calm. We're opposite here. So I'm glad we're both not on Michigan. We haven't been all season and you're right. I have not taken them all season. I was looking through the numbers. This is the first time. So if they lose, Stumpers, never taking them again. Uh, next game, <laughs> Purdue at Ohio State. I was tempted for the, the go blue parlay. I was so tempted to take Purdue here. Uh, I, I just don't see the route. I don't see how Purdue's going to be able to be one-dimensional the way they were against Michigan State and score with Ohio State. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the number is also big 20. So, 20 and a half. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I would think Purdue can cover that, especially coming up. But fuck, who the hell knows with Purdue? That, that's an interesting squad. They've had a also like up and down year with some some of their losses, right? Like the Wisconsin, Minnesota um, losses. Some drubbings. At home. Some drubbings. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, but I mean, then when you beat, uh, you know, when you when you have W's like Michigan State and at Iowa, right? Like that, that's the big shocker. When at Iowa, it's kind of like, well, I mean, I feel like you can hang, especially twenty. This this Iowa uh, Ohio State team hasn't really been covering some of these spreads. So, um, so yeah, so I, you, I if if I put a gun to your head, you would say Purdue here, right? Cover? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Twenty, I think that's a little too much. Yeah, I I feel like. Well, Stumpers, what we do before the episode is Johnny sort of goes to the games he likes, and I always try to, in my mind, predict. And this one I had as you take in Ohio State, so it just goes to show how much I know about you. I, I know you. I know. I know your true allegiance is to the uh, the red and what's the burgundy? What is it? No, <laughs> something red and some stupid gray. It, it's a yes, that's right. Yeah. The, the, the metallic gray. Yeah, but there's like a name they use. <laughs> Fucking losers, losers, uh, loser gray. Yeah, I think I think this is also a game where Henderson has has a breakout. I think this this will be the one where he has a, a stupid a stupid amount of carries. They're gonna feed. They're gonna feed him. Uh, Ohio State tends to do well down this stretch before they hit the the Michigan's Michigan states. So we uh, we shall see. Uh, next game is Minnesota at Iowa. Oh, sorry. It's scarlet. The color I'm referring to is scarlet, and that's the red, not the gray. Scar- scarlet. I know it's. I think it's scarlet gray. Is what it is. Is it? So yeah, yeah. I think they call it scarlet gray. I'm pretty sure. It's so dumb. No. Yeah, yeah. You're right. It's so dumb. Yeah. It's, it's the dumbest thing. So yeah, Minnesota, Minnesota at Iowa. Iowa minus five and a half. Uh, game does have some relevance in in the. Big Ten pitcher. We are Big Ten fans. No one's as big of a Big Ten fan as you, but we are <laughs> Big Ten fans. Uh, so both of these teams with aspirations of coming out of their said side. So there's a four-way tie in the Big Ten West. It was Wisconsin at four and two, Minnesota at four and two, Purdue at four and two, Iowa at four and two. So this is an elimination game in the West. Oh yeah, this is huge. And again, I. I mean, fuck, Iowa from the beginning of the year for the last three weeks is entirely different. I mean, they barely beat Northwestern, 17-12. Just not a really good look. Um, so, I yeah. mean, th- this is this is definitely, like you said, elimination game. And, I mean, it's not looking good for Purdue that they have to play Ohio State. So, um, this is def- definitely a huge W for whoever can get out there and, and want it more. I mean, again, Iowa has a favorable schedule. They got Illinois, but maybe Illinois is actually not as bad as we think they were in the beginning of the year um they're actually not they're decent and then you got at nebraska for iowa so uh, for iowa i think it's actually a, a must win if i think i think they really have no chance um and it'll be actually a, a really sad ending to iowa um <laughs> considering how they started 
it's like, especially if they lose this game, I think they're finished. Nebraska is going to beat them at the end of the year. And even Illinois, I, I like Illinois, um, especially with the game or two that I watched with Illinois, shockingly. Um, this will be an interesting, uh, uh, an interesting game, yeah, especially at five and a half, Iowa. That's an interesting one. Who, uh, gun, gun to my head, I would say Minnesota covers that number. I could see like a field goal win. I was – has not mm-hmm. looked impressive. I think that I actually completely forgot they snuck one out against Northwestern. I completely forgot that they yeah, mind you, just North, not impressive, not yeah, impressive. North, Northwestern went on their own little, uh, little 10 2 run, or I guess 9 2. Um, <laughs> so uh, looking at this, Wisconsin needs to trip up in order for like all roads, Wisconsin to, to Indy. That's yeah, sort of yeah. the, the route, Wisconsin only really has a difficult game against Minnesota to end the year at Minnesota. Yeah. It would be nice. It would be nice for that to mean something down the stretch at the same time, power, power to Wisconsin. They, they had a gauntlet to start the year. They had a fucking gauntlet, very front loaded schedule. And they came out, you know, scathed. They lost to Penn state, lost to Notre Dame, lost to Michigan. Those are three top 25 teams. Mm -hmm. Uh, for those to be the only three L's in the schedule and to be playing better football as the season has gone on. Good for them. I have no hate for that program ever. Uh, but yeah, I, I would say, I would say Minnesota here and I think upset alert, they win. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I like that. I like that. Just, just on Iowa because, or this is a similar topic just with Iowa, but I'll transition over to asking you a question. Cause I did like the Iowa punter um, early in the year and that whole kind of, um, transition of of changing field position and i think it's an underrated i was talking to one of our listeners um mr clark kent aka jeff and he i mean i'm having a conversation i'll ask you this do you this guy he, he wants special teams pretty much kicking out of um out of football i guess pros but even even if college football somebody he's watched um and i'm a big believer that that's such a X factor, these little details like special teams, because um, even, for example, a guy I sent you with San Diego State, um, uh, Matt Ariza, he's like a kicker and a punter who's like had 80 yard punts. So in his own fucking one, they fucking, he boots it. Um, and his average is between 50 to 80 yard punts. So to me, that's like an X factor. I mean, college football even more so. Um, if he makes the NFL, I think that's like an X factor where these little details like special teams where you change positions like that is so huge. And San Diego State is a defensive team. So, and if, you know, we're not going to touch on them, but they're they're uh, in the top 25, 22, number 22, and they're four and one in the Mountain West. And, and that's just, a, you know, I read a whole article on the kid and. It's impressive that they just so you know, special teams is such a unique confidence booster, in my opinion. But what do you think of like eliminating that part of the game? So you say you're saying kicking it out, like just booting it in into the fucking stand. Like I, I I'm not understanding the, the question. Yeah, is- so there there has been talks. I remember in the NFL of eliminating, for example, field goals and even eliminating punting like I, i've actually read some articles and i was just having this conversation oh. so and, and i and i don't like that I, I like special teams it's that that third team in the nfl it's that you know obviously there's offense defense most important but that's third team is the special teams where you have the unsung heroes a lot of guys who are not getting paid the big bucks but it's in to my opinion it's such an important part of football where if you do have a good special team whether it's kick return punt return a good kicker a good punter there's little details that do change the game and do help you, right? There's nothing like a kick return touchdown or great field position, or even a punting that is like probably out of all four of those, probably the least respected a punter and fuck a guy who can punt the ball 50 to 80 yards is a fucking difference maker. I think, I think it goes without saying, I think it's, it's as important as anything in football is a good special team. I my hot take would be you rarely see a good football team without good special teams. It's a rare, rare thing. They usually tie mm-hmm. in to both. And I, I think sometimes that also also shows the depth within rosters is you have good gunners that are, you know, backup wide receivers, you know, fourth or fifth. Yes. They're looking to get on the field. They, they want to make an impact. Uh I think also there is a lot of strategy to it where if you have said secret weapon, you have 
yes. a dude that's able to punt 80 yards down the field and you're pin deep in a situation like Bama, Bama that we were referencing and you're pin deep there. You're not as afraid of going three and out where there you go. You know, where, where a team and a perfect team in college football that I can reference is Nebraska. They've had kicking issues all season, not punting necessarily. It hasn't been great on punting, but their field goal kicking has been a nightmare. They've missed chip shot. You leave points. I think I think for the casual football fan, I don't know if Clark Kent's a casual or if he follows it closely, but if you follow the game from wire to wire, uh, a special team's gaff or big play is almost, if not more important than a sack, than a, oh yeah, right? Yeah. Like, it, like yeah. it, it, stuff that creates instant turnovers, instant field position, it, those type of things, very important. The only thing I will say is I think they need to change the way kickoffs go. And okay. we can talk about another episode. I, I, I actually post a clip. I'll send you the clip and we'll actually dive into it. But the way they do kickoffs is just way too deadly currently, way too oh, deadly for, for the health of it. And they're all, to where it's at now, where everything's just an auto touchback, just seems stupid. And there's work that can be done there, but no, special teams is very important. And I think anyone that disagrees, okay. I, I would yell from the mountaintops. I think it's a crucial thing. College football playoff it's, champion, the, those champs do not have shitty kicking games or, you know, turnovers well, with punts. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. I'm just saying that because. I've, I, I've actually also read talks of eliminating certain aspects of special teams because people find it boring and so forth. And I mean, just like any other sport, the game has evolved, right? Football has evolved since the 40s to the 60s to the 60s to the 80s, the 80s to now. Yeah. It has it has evolved and it will evolve. You know, in, the, in our lifetime, the next 10, 20 years, there'll be new rules, um, new little bullshit that they'll add in, whether it's the pros of college. And obviously, they're always looking for ways to make it more entertaining and keep it, you know, this and that. And I, and that's why I brought that up because uh, yeah, um, it will, it will be, you know, it will be, I'm sure they will make more adjustments just like how the NFL made it where they pushed back the, the extra points and, you know, they, they're always consistently adjusting and evolving. So. No, it's, it, it, any, any questions you ever get from anyone that even presses play, please. Or, or Chico who gets a pass. Anybody that presses play has a question, whether it's whether I totally disagree or not. I greatly appreciate it. Clark Kent, that is the name we're going with. Uh, thank you very much. It's it's always good to know someone's listened to something. Uh, fuck, man, I'm going to do it twice. This is this is my upset of the week. Maryland beats Michigan State. And it's not because I hate yes. not because I hate Michigan State. I think. Looking at it, this is this is supposed to be the, uh, the the cruise. This this to me reminds me of a look past game. Do you understand what I mean when I say that? It feels like something you're just, yeah, <laughs> we're gonna take care of Maryland, and then we got this really really big game against Ohio State next week. I can see Michigan State sort of slipping up here. Maryland is not a solid football team by any stretch of the imagination, but they're not a pushover. Would you agree? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, this would be – I agree with that philosophy. This would be the one look-over game that your Michigan State – but coming coming off an L, I would think they would be up for this game. Um, I'm hoping they, they lose so it, it officially eliminates them from contention college football playoff. Um, there, there, there is – I'm going to cut you off. There is a thing where if Michigan State wins out and Michigan wins out, I, I'm perfectly fine conceding the Big Ten – to Michigan State. If they can win out, I'm, I'm not looking for them to be eliminated. I just don't believe they're good. That's my mm -hmm. problem. I, do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, like I, and we'll get to the CFP thing, but I think that's my main point. They fucking went out. They go, they beat Maryland, they beat Ohio State, they beat Penn State. Handshake. Well done. You're going, you're going to the Big Ten Championship. Win that. You're going to lose by 100 to whoever you play in the playoffs. Fair? Oh, absolutely. I agree. I mean, it would still, again, I, I even though you're not at that tier with Bama or, uh, um, Georgia, I still give credit to anyone who makes three and four. And if it's a Michigan State, I agree with I agree with you. I, I, I mean, that's a successful season considering Michigan State was unranked and yeah. considering a bunch of a bunch of transfers. If you look at the list of like their players from the defense and offensive side that actually contribute, it's a bunch of transfers. So it's like Mel Tucker. That's fantastic work on you, and you can't be mad with that. And I mean. Anyway, yeah, again, you get blown out, you get blown out. But either way, uh, I would agree with that. If they can they can pull that off, that would be extremely impressive. 
Um, Maryland, fuck, I, I I liked them early on. I thought that Iowa, I remember that Iowa game. I thought they were going to pull that upset up. They got destroyed. They got destroyed by Ohio State. Um, I don't know if Michigan State will cover 13 and a half, 13. Um, I'm hoping, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing an upset. Um, that would be fantastic. I just don't see it. I think Michigan State, fuck, you have so much to play for that you would come out and and have that convincing win this week based off of last week's letdown. I mean, that would be a, a stunning turnaround to lose back-to-back um, games, like a, a Maryland at home and obviously the Purdue game on the road, but I, that would be a shocker to me. It's, they, it's, they it's, it's, it's my second pick, and I stand by it. I like Maryland plus 13 and a half. I said the upset, like the fresh upset look, more that it, it would be beautiful, and I can see it happening. Uh, Maryland doesn't run the ball anyway. They're not going to need the rut to run the ball. To his brother's just going to – he's going to throw it consistently. I just – I honestly, I, I see a 34-31 game. That's, that's wow. where I'm going. Yeah. yeah no, if you hit that, that would be fucking impressive. I might just put a little bit of money on that money line just for the hell of it. $5. Couch, couch money. It's couch money. It's it. Bro, oh, yeah. bro, go a little your tuna you find and lighter. It, it, it'll be on all my point spreads. Uh, wow. Okay. Let's see. We are moving on to weird one. SEC stuff. Uh, Mississippi State at Auburn. Auburn minus five and a half. Mississippi State played a really tight game against Arkansas last week. I, I, I like to think Auburn just cruises here. Uh, in in saying that, which Bo Nix are we gonna get? Oh, I think I think we're getting the Bo Nix at home. It's that that Auburn team is an entirely different team on the road than they are at home. If I think at home they're pretty solid, and um, I expect that I don't know enough about Mich- uh, Mississippi State. Um, I'll take your word on on obviously them being a tough team, but I I, I do like the Auburn team, especially at home. I, I think they're solid and, and five and a half. I I really like that. I think they get a comfortable win from my especially coming off of an L last week. I think they get a comfortable. L. So, w. so you're locking that as as a pick five and a half. Yes, you got it. Johnny coming in hot. I thought you were only going to do Big Twelve stuff. I'm glad you're back on the real football. It's nice to see. Nice to see. Uh, we got Georgia at Tennessee. I will say, this is probably the most suspicious line on Saturday that I could find. I know Tennessee hasn't been awful. For Georgia only to be twenty, what am I missing? Tennessee's actually like a tough out at home also, right? Like if you look at some of the games they've played um, for whatever reason, as long as Joe Milton's not fucking playing, they, they can, uh, I guess. They, have they were last week. I had Kentucky, man. Tennessee went in there, beat him in the rivalry. There you go, right? So you, you, you that's a, that's a, that, that was a classic one right there. Tennessee at UK and, and UK, Kentucky uh, or favorite. Or let's, by one? Let, yeah, 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 by one. And it ended up being a pickup. Let, let's do some simple math, though. So, Tennessee squeak one out, out in Kentucky, right? So, yeah. fair enough. That's a nice win. What did Georgia do when they played Kentucky? They fucking smoked them, right? Oh, yeah. They smoked them. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what I mean is, is something's missing. Something's awry. It might be the, susp- the suspension you mentioned. I'm not quite sure. But something, something seems off. And I, I understand they, they smoked them. They beat Kentucky by 17. It felt like a lot more. Like a backdoor touchdown. I watched Tennessee. They don't really impress me. I, I didn't have the guts to play Georgia here. I did do it on my six-pack thing. But the line feels weird. And I, I, I agree with you. Is hookers look fine. It's more if Milton gets in the game. That's when everyone just starts greasing the palms. Like, yeah. <laughs> do it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, again, and even even uh, I remember Georgia playing Florida. The number was what, like fourteen? It was something also where you're like, oh. And I, I watched the first half of Florida Georgia, and Florida was in it until like a couple of bad turnovers that resulted in like defensive TDs. So I mean, that's what I'm assuming that again, uh, bookmakers are going off of because it's on the road. Georgia's on the road against Tennessee. And I mean, it's not 14, it's 20. So it's, uh, it's three touchdowns as opposed to the two that they were given up against uh, Florida. Um, but I, I guess I learned my lesson with the Florida. I would still take Georgia. Um, 
This but, was your, this was your L last week, right? You had them by like a thousand against uh, Missouri. They only won right. by nine hundred and ninety nine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think I lost by one point, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. <laughs> yep. That was that's a homo. Uh, especially Stumpers, Stumpers. I'm going to cut him off. I did not remind him that game was at noon. That game was at noon. I did not tell him you took an L. This is the dynamic we have. At nine thirty. Kentucky could not get in field goal range to tie the game up. I get a message. Your boys from Kentucky could have pulled through. This is the rivalry, (laughs) the budding rivalry. And so I responded with the gif of the Missouri Tigers. And you're like, yeah. (laughs) That's right. I was waiting. I wait in the wind with you. I wait. I'm like, oh, this guy, there's no way he's going to let me off the hook with this loss. There's no way. I know that already. We, We have our sponsors need us to win, right? Our sponsors, all our listeners. It's true. It's true. We do have we do have some games that uh, uh, we have some listeners that definitely just follow whatever the hell we say. So they they don't they goes learning the college football. Game. I mean, Julian Escalon, my ma, that and my fa, that he he's on your picks day like weekly. So <laughs> he's eating nachos today like, this week after your fucking nice W's last week. Hundred percent. He no, he's eating the calamari. The zero and three week. He was like <laughs> he was on food stamps. He had the alfagettis. <laughs> He was, he was, he was in rough shape. Uh, so we, we won't harp on this one too much. I feel like the line is funky. Texas A&M at Ole Miss minus two and a half Texas A&M. These two teams are ranked next door to each other. I think 11, 12 or 10 and 11, whatever. It's sort mm. of right. It's close. Um, what do you think happens here? I, I I'm going to say, I think Corral Corral throws for 300 plus yards. That's all. That'll be, that'll be good for his, uh, um, resume. I mean, the Texas A&M defense is pretty solid, um, and if he can do that again, that'll be good for us. I don't think he wins. Uh, I, I think his name has fallen off now. Um, yeah. Since he came back, the reality, right? When you start playing better defenses, unfortunately, you start to see um, how real you are or not. Um, the number is interesting: two and a half on the road, um, and over and under fifty-six. So I, I, I guess fifty-six. They are expecting in the in the. 20s and 30s i suppose around there um yeah it would be a, that's a, that should be a, an underrated good game right when you look at both of them being four four and two three and two seven and two overall seven and two overall um yeah it's that like middle of, it's that upper echelon sec winner winner of this game definite back in the top 10 and uh big w right comes for someone over here but yeah two and a half on the road that's an interesting line right this is very much a Texas A&M wins this game. They, I believe, have a soft finish. If I'm not mistaken, I'll double check. Mm. And they have they they go to LSU, which isn't soft, but you know, it should handle. They play Prairie Review. Uh, it'll come down to Bam. They they could possibly be representing the West in the SEC title game if you and I's Iron Bowl prediction of Auburn beating Bama comes through. So this mm. is very big for Texas A&M. This is like. A, mm big stamp and it just puts a little oh, bit yeah. more pressure on them oh yeah that's a good way to look at it absolutely if you look at down the road a couple of weeks from now that's a really good way to look at that this game being that important yeah I, I i would even be able to predict it it should be a nice one and i feel like i may be home to actually watch a good football game yeah 7 p.m i'll be home i'll watch that that's gonna be my tune in uh let's roll quickly notre dame at virginia i feel like we never talked about notre dame on this Notre Dame, five and a half point favorites. Virginia is a lot of fun to watch. I don't know if said quarterback has actually been cleared for return. Have you been watching any of Notre Dame? Uh, early on, I watched more Notre Dame than the last few weeks that they played UNC and Navy. Um, but they, eight and one, they, they, they've had an impressive, like, I guess it's like an underrated year because they did have, they do have nice W's in my opinion, Purdue, Wisconsin, at Virginia Tech, um, I guess UNC, if you want to give them any love, um, their L was the Cincy. So, I mean, I Which feel was a great like, game, right? Which was a great yeah, game. Yeah, absolutely, right? So, I mean, they have a good opportunity to finish the season with one L. If they beat Virginia, they go to, uh, they play Georgia Tech and then at Stanford. And again, New Year's Bowl for sure. They don't have the games to be back in the college football playoff discussion, but they will be 
in a big time bowl. That's for sure. And that's what Notre Dame is all about, right? They're always there. Um, always finish the year in the top 10 uh, the last few years, right? I've always called football playoff or a big time, um, big time bowl. So I expect them again this year to be in, in another big time bowl. They have some NFLers, that Hamilton guy, definitely going to be like top three, top five in the NFL and a uh, good running back. They, they have a good, good squad. And, and like, it's an underrated year because it's kind of like um, eight and one is fantastic. And, I guess it's because they're also not even in a conference. This kind of hurts them sometimes. Because... We, kill, we kill for an 8-1 right now, right? Which we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of sucks for them because they're definitely like, oh, it's 8-1, and one, but then it's like, look at who they played. Do you, you respect them when they play Navy? Do you respect them when they play Toledo, uh, Florida State, USC, right? Like, would, you, I mean, would, you have, would you have respected Cincy if they weren't this good, right? Since he's on that schedule years ago. Absolutely. No, you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But this is a legit Cincy team, right? That was that's yeah. Cincy's best win is beating Notre Dame, right? So and Notre Dame, that shouldn't be a bad loss because Cincinnati's a legit top 10 team, right? So yeah, I guess I guess that would be Cincy's biggest true. Uh Brennan Armstrong is questionable for this game, the quarterback for Virginia. He got hurt against BYU. This team mm-hmm. is fun. They are Virginia is fun. They they go up and down the field. They don't play a ton of defense, which is why they got they gave up 66 to BYU. But yeah, this this game is that number is very indicative of a tight game. This will be this will be a bit of a dog fight. Uh this next game you have a side on NC State at Wake. What do you like? Oh, you know, Wake, I think coming off a, a devastating owl. Um I think they they're gonna come out and get this one. This is a big time game for them, right? This is this is if you're Following ACC, um, this is huge, right? NC State, big year for them as well. They, they've been impressive. And, I mean, for Wake Forest, you've got to come back after that loss against UNC and, and get this W. You have Clemson at Clemson the following week and then at the BC to end the year off. And you've had a successful year in, in the ACC. And, I mean, if you want to win this fucking conference, this is it right here, right? I mean, in for NC State, same thing. I mean, they. I just give this advantage to Wake Forest based off of last week's L and being at home. Being at home, I think, will be a big difference maker um, for Wake Forest to come out and, and pull this one off. North, North Carolina State doesn't do a lot for me. They, they don't pass a lot of eye test stuff. They get W's, which I guess is con- a contradicting statement. The so Wolfpack are hounding. They're nipping at Wake Forest's feet, ankles, for first place in the Atlantic. They're 4-1. Yeah. and Wake Forest being 5-1. and one. Uh, winner of this should, I mean, Wake Forest wins, make a valid point. They they are at Clemson next week. It'd be annoying if Clemson still won the ACC. Oh, Look, yes, yes, I do not want to see them win. go to bed. Go to bed. It's enough. You guys stink. Like for what you are, you stink. Uh, but yeah, I, I I tend to lean with you on Wake here. I think they they have enough offense that their defense is going to be exposed once again. It's not a very solid defense. They'll they'll make enough plays. I think Ono. I think Hartman just obviously needs to minimize the mistakes. Five touchdowns this past week with two picks. That's the stuff that that changes it, right? Where Howell makes no yeah. mistakes, and that's the difference. And just stay out of those scenarios. And yeah, it being at Wake is big. Uh, this might be the first time, Stumpers, that we've done this on CFB Ballers. Johnny and I are both on Baylor plus five and a half against Oklahoma. That means dig through your couch, get all your change. And go buy go buy a lottery ticket because we never take the same game. Uh, I really like Baylor here. I think the line is indicative of a tight, tight football game. I oh, yeah. don't know. I, I don't know how I feel with Oklahoma coming off a bye. It did give them an extra week where Baylor went to TCU and lost. I think knowing all that, like if Baylor went to TCU and won 30 to 28, would this line be shorter? Like I watched the TCU Baylor game. You know, in and out, in and out. Baylor looks fine. TCU is just making plays. I guess after the firing of their coach, you know what I mean. Like I feel like this line was is fucking weird. It's a weird one. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. Definitely, I think you make a good point. It would definitely be a. I think it'd be a lot lower than uh, yeah. five and a half. Um, and, and I think this is like we said, Oklahoma. The last three games they got Oklahoma State. Um, 
Iowa State and Baylor. This is it right here. This is if if they can pull this off, that would be extremely impressive. I think um, punch their ticket, we, right? Punch their ticket. Punch their ticket. Yes, absolutely. I think early on in the year we said like this, especially with it, when it was Spencer Rattler. Um, I felt like this stretch right here, they were going to take a couple L's. Me too. Um, me too. And this is it right here, right? So I mean, if if I expect. Baylor to yeah money line even money line and I like them to cover. My concern is that since Caleb Williams has started, they're a different team. I honestly think if Caleb Williams probably started from day one, he would probably be the Heisman favorite right now. I mean the guy is balling out of control, um, and again because it's the Big Twelve, and he's if he if they do get the college football playoffs, he's not going to see a defense that's that impressive until um obviously a fucking tier one defense that he's gonna good luck with that right against georgia or Alabama. um but he i think he's extremely impressive he's changed that whole the whole dynamic of this team and the energy and everything about it the guy the guy has definitely changed everything about oklahoma that being said i think this is a perfect this is like a little trap game that uh, vegas yeah. even has right that that number i, I unfortunately this may be um, Caleb Williams taking his first L. Um, if not the first L, I feel like it's going to be a really close one. Agree. Uh, uh, yeah, I think you hit a lot of the points. Baylor's got in the Big 12, they got all good defense. And that's not saying a lot. It's very middle of the pack. You said the that before. It's You've definitely said that before early on in the year that they were a decent defense. Uh, Respect, think, respectable in the, in yeah. the country, good in the Big 12. There you go, right? And I think um, the defense early on helped them beat the Iowa State team, right? I think that was like one of the big Ws. Yes, one of their big Ws early in the year that they beat a ranked Iowa State team, right? So, um, yeah, again, this is the perfect little trap game for Oklahoma. I, 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 you gave me your picks. I let you go first this week, and I'm like, I'm not removing Baylor. I really like Baylor here. I really do. It's probably it's probably one of my favorite games on the slate this season, for a side. Uh, yeah, we'll, we shall see. Uh, we'll we'll quickly touch TCU at Oklahoma State. I'm like a closet Oklahoma State fan. Minus thirteen. They're getting no respect. I think something very similar that we just discussed with Baylor. Oklahoma State actually has the best Big Twelve defense. They can pack that defense. Bedlam, which is the rivalry game with Oklahoma. This is going to be their best shot of winning it, but I, you've known me for how many years, Johnny, and I've said that how many years, right? It's, it's been a consistent sort of theory. Uh, this, is, this is not – they cannot have a trap game here. They need to take care of business because if they can win out in the Big 12, and it's not asking a lot. It's TCU, Texas Tech, and Oklahoma, which shouldn't be favored by more than a touchdown. Win out. Your first, I, I believe you'd be first in the Big 12, right? Yeah. You first, you get a rematch of Bedlam. You get a rematch. Or if Baylor were to beat fucking Oklahoma, you'd get Baylor again. So I I, I just, I, I like the look. So we shall, we shall see. What do you think of this game? Good, good call. I, I'm looking at their, um, yeah, no, you're absolutely right with the defense. So you called it because I'm looking at their, their, their W's and the most they've given up is 24 against Texas. Um, or the loss against uh, Iowa State, 24. Everything else, only three to West Virginia, only three to Kansas, only 14 to Baylor, only 20 to Kansas State, only 20 to Boise, right? Like, so that is actually impressive. Um, In the Big 12. Yeah, no, that's that's impressive because you're absolutely right. The Big 12 is just not, is known for non-defense, all offense, air it out, fucking bombs away. Let's get this going. The sp- the over and under is seventy, and let's let's fucking get this to a hundred. Um, and yeah, no, that's why I, when you said that, I am just looking at their numbers, and it, that's impressive. That's a good call on you, being that if they have the best defense, they can easily go fucking win this these last three games, right? And and with that spread being thirteen against TCU, I think they should convince them, get another convincing win. And uh, yeah, good good point with Oklahoma. And he, if Oklahoma slips up this week or against Iowa State, hey, it's there for the taking against Oklahoma State can get them at home too. Let's let's do a thing that we always do via messaging, and we'll throw it on the pod. It's two weeks from now, I believe, or maybe three weeks. Give me your spread for Bedlam. What's the spread? Ooh, um, 
It's in Oklahoma State. That's a good one. Uh, Oklahoma's undefeated, correct? Oklahoma is undefeated going into that game. Let's say they have a loss. Oklahoma State has a loss. For argument's sake, there's a loss for Oklahoma. One. Oh, okay. So they both have L's. They have one L each. Yeah. Okay. I'll say four and a half Oklahoma. Fuck you. I was okay. I'll say four. I'll say four Oklahoma. Uh, yeah. I think, I think I, I would agree with that just based off of if they were both coming in with one L, I would think so because especially if Oklahoma loses at Baylor and they beat Oklahoma, Iowa state at home. I think that will, that would pro I, I'm a, I guess we'll find out, but yeah, I, I would say that would be the number. And if Oklahoma was undefeated, I guess add like another point or two to it. I, I don't think any more than that because no more than a touchdown, right? No, no more than a touchdown. No fucking way. Just based off of what you, with the Oklahoma state defense being solid and that's a big time rival. And again, it's still a freshman QB that, Let's see what he does in the three games. These are big time Big Twelve games. He's got three big time Big Twelve yeah. games. If he comes out and fucking smokes them, fuck, give him the. He's 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 well, fuck. This guy's the man. I will say, I think Lincoln Riley presses all the right buttons. I think that's one of his skills, and you can't really put that on paper. So people who who don't really judge that stuff or care about it are going to make fun of you for that statement. But I think he presses all the right buttons. And when he took out Rattler and put in Williams is probably one of the like smoothest moves, knowing that it's backloaded the schedule. And not that these are scrimmage games, because there's been some tricky ones, but you, the end of your season is going to dictate it in the big 12 for Oklahoma. Right. So we shall see. Uh, recapping our picks before we gently touch on the CFP. Uh, I've got Michigan plus Michigan pick them. We'll just say Michigan pick them, but it's plus 0 0.5. I got Maryland plus 13 and a half. And we both got Baylor plus five and a half. Johnny's also got Auburn minus five and a half and Wake Forest minus two. Um, I really wanted to ask you, do you find it weird that in the CFP, Oregon, sorry, the rankings go Georgia one, Bama two, Oregon three, Ohio State four, Cincinnati five, Michigan, six, little brother, seven. Do you find it weird that Oregon is ahead of Ohio State because of that win in the horseshoe? But Michigan State is behind Michigan. They beat them at home. What, what, what do you feel about that? Yeah, that's interesting. I think, I mean, one of the things that I think they, they emphasize is, okay, Michigan lost to Michigan State. Great. Michigan State is a college football playoff team. They're there. I think the main thing is Michigan State lost Purdue. That's no, not even close to there. So that's why I feel like they take that step back. And with Oregon and Ohio State, it's the same kind of – I mean, Oregon has the best W going to the horseshoe and beating Ohio State, but then they lost to fucking Stanford. So that's a little that's – that's an interesting one. I don't know how they – I don't know how they place that. I don't know how you analyze that one because in that case – you're just saying yes. Oregon and Ohio State are the same. Same. They're they're pretty much the same level. And because Oregon beat Ohio State in on the road, we'll give Oregon that benefit of the doubt. But it's like, well, I mean, that Stanford L is not impressive at all. Right? That that's a bad L. Just like I, Michigan. State. I agree. I, I, I you took you took the words right from my mouth. You pretty much broke it down exactly as I was watching. Uh, the Champions Classic yesterday, college basketball, and they had the college football playoff, uh, the standings released in, uh, during mm -hmm. half, during not halftime, in the bit in the middle of the two games. And I said the same fucking thing to myself. I was thinking, I was like, how the hell are we arguing that Michigan is not ahead of Michigan State? And the one guy, I can't remember the panelist's name, thank goodness, it was Joey Galloway, it was Kerb Herb Street, it was Reese Davis. The guy sitting next to Reese Davis was like, but a week ago, Michigan State beat him. And it's like, I understand the NCAA. It's a shield. It's like a brotherhood. The officials botched that game. I think that is what the college football committee committee is talking about for a half an hour. They discussed these two teams for half an hour. And if you and I both know what was talked about in that room, that clown does as well. But he's just trying to get a stir. And I'm glad I don't know his name because he's an idiot and he's lost. I have to say, though, with these sort of rankings, so Oregon wins out and they're in the college football playoff. Lame, lame to me. That's fucking annoying. Yeah, that's I, I agree with that. 
There should be there should be no way they get that box. You good? Sorry, but that's not first. I got glitched again. My main my main point was that there should be no way Oregon has that run through to the CFP. I get the horseshoe win. Pac twelve is not good enough. You agree, Johnny? Oh, 100 percent, hundred percent. The Oregon schedule to end the year isn't that impressive, right? So, again, unfortunately, the Pac twelve doesn't have the teams to to make Oregon's resume that great you know what I mean so I mean when you look at who they end off with Washington State Utah Oregon State and they're not ranked they beat Washington by 10 points great Um, they beat UCLA by three points great so if you're kind of hating on Cincinnati um, then what makes Oregon that much fucking impressive that one w against against ohio state early in the year is their their biggest w fantastic but again like i said the stanford l isn't impressive stanford isn't a fucking top they're not going to play stanford again for the pac-12 championship game or anything like that right so um yeah I, again i agree with you on that one i, I don't know pretty much since he's out since he's out is what they're telling you pretty much yeah because the winner of the big 10 Got the spot. pretty much in and then it's kind of like so is it going to be oregon or is oklahoma or you know if oklahoma goes undefeated does oklahoma go in there right like since he's going to get shafted the way the way it doesn't matter right it makes no yeah. difference they're not making it i think yeah they, I, I look at it pd and uh, johnny and i'm like you know what wait a sec ohio state is the four they would be playing georgia that's the gift for being the one seed is you get Georgia. And then on the other side, Bama gets Oregon. And I get they're doing this. It's like, it's almost clickbait. That's what they're doing. They're baiting yeah, arguments, yeah. right? They're baiting it. I think, I think you hit the nail on that. Big 10 champion, big 12 champion. I think two SEC champions. That's, that's the final four. I, I, yes. I mean, other, other than a shocking Wisconsin representing, you know, the, uh, the big 10, that wouldn't happen, obviously. But yeah, since he's at the point of like you got to cheer upsets now, got to cheer it. We haven't lost. We beat Notre Dame. We haven't lost. It's fucked, right? It sucks. Oh, absolutely. If if you're Cincy, you want like as you want more mayhem. You want Alabama to take one more L. You want all the Big Ten teams take L's. Um, Oklahoma take an L. You just want mayhem to the point where it's like, and then you even want Oregon to take one more L to the point where it's like, oh, okay, so. You have still to let him in. in. You have to let him in at that point, where because it's like we've done everything, put us in there. Because because the college football players does not want Cincinnati. I'm, I'm unfortunately they're not a big enough program. All the programs they're competing against, whether it's Oregon, Oklahoma, Ohio State, Michigan, Michigan State, yeah, are all bigger, bigger brands, bigger following, everything about it, right? Cincinnati will be the Cinderella story that only. Uh, true college football fans want to watch and everyone else will be like what are they doing here against georgia meanwhile guess what they played georgia last year in a bowl game and played them pretty tough why not let's watch that again yeah i i yeah it's 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 a shame team like since he needs more chaos when they've done nothing but play what's in front of them but unfortunately you and i i think one of the first episodes we ever did this we know it's money talks bullshit walks it's all that matters oh yeah Uh, yeah yeah Great episode and, 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 of, the- and, and, and they, they will just they will all all that college football playoff committee will say is like, hey, you guys only barely beat Navy, Tulane, and Tulsa by an average of ten yeah. points. That's the bottom line. That's what they will tell them, and that's the end of that. But they won't go into details of Oregon barely beating their fucking competition over there. I, I yeah, it's, the. Since he would have to win every game by 30 to, to automatically get in, right? They, they are always going to be writing a narrative that the small school doesn't belong in there. Uh, another great episode of what the NCAA and college football playoff do is like clickbait is create this conversation. But pretty sure I have you on this pod saying, I don't, I don't know what since will have to do to get in. This is just after the Notre Dame win. And it's like, yeah, it's playing out exactly as you thought. And I know you weren't shocked when I sent you the, photo of the top seven and they're the one to go like they're not even going to be five they're going to be six yeah they're going to go backwards right but uh i genuinely appreciate the sit down episode uh hopefully i did not jinx michigan with the plus 0.5 stumpers please like and subscribe on youtube and spotify to the clark kents of the world that listen 
anything you guys have for Johnny, please submit. I don't have a lot of friends that watch college football, but maybe I'm just going to start making questions up for myself. Uh, <laughs> thanks, to Dil- thanks to Dylan for the music. Uh, thanks to everybody for the support. Please enjoy. Go blue. Johnny, see you next week. Yes, but before you go, I got one fight song for you. This is dedicated to you. Hold up, hold up. Now I know. Okay. Go blue. There it is. That's how you end the show. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I swear to you, I've heard that fight song hundreds of times. I could not pick it out until I heard that last part. Of it. I, I, I hate it. Uh, Stumpers, please enjoy. Thank you. We just passed a foreign city sign. Your feet on the dash. You got your favorite top on. I got my foot on the